in the 1970s and 1980s and also 1960s the Philips organization tried to make electronics popular um, by publishing many magazines, books, etc. And I found this um, sleeve with a lot of small magazines in it on a radio flea market and I uh, thought it was very interesting to show. Um, Philips was active in the 1970s and 1980s. Uh, they published, for instance, this magazine, <coughs> Hobbyscope, news for hobbyists and radio amateurs, and this is uh, the uh, this is the magazine from 25 November 1978. <coughs> um, this was, of course, a very good idea to make electronics popular for everyone. So this is the magazine in the sleeve about semiconductors from the series We and the Electronics. Uh, the good thing from all these books was that they were uh, scientific uh, and they were popular at the same time. And they also handled about uh, pure scientific things, for instance, how the atom was built, uh, hydrogen, helium, lithium, etc., etc., and they try to explain it all in a very good and proper way. You can see, for instance, all the atom numbers. So chemistry, uh, science and physics were combined in these books, in these books and made popular. Ion binding, uh, classical theme in chemistry, uh, metal binding, also a classical theme in uh, chemistry, and uh, for instance, uh, here we see conduction and isolation explained, covalent binding etc. etc. Semiconductor materials, there are a lot. And here we have, for instance, an explanation about how the current and the electrons move inside a wire. There is a, um, a current of holes and also a current of electrons. And this is explained here in a good way. Ok, uh, I cannot show the complete magazine, I do my best and it's more or less, uh, this video is more or less to give some ideas uh, to show how these books, how these magazines in the past were made and uh, now I go, for instance, to the next uh, video, oh, sorry, the next book, magazine, about uh, electronic calculation machines. I go back for a very short moment to here, to this picture, where, in this book, they explained how a transistor was made, NPN or PMP, and how... Uh, the conduction inside the transistor was explained. Interesting. Electronic calculation uh, machines. When you study old um, magazines from uh, automation or calculation machines in the 60s, you will always see this 
these storage uh, machines where they use magnetic tapes. They were uh, active till approximately, I think, 1990 or so, 1985. I don't know that exactly. I don't have so much experience. But this was the classical way to uh, store magnetic, in a magnetic way, information. And here we have in this book from Philips <coughs> uh, uh, many explanations about analog and digital, analog calculating machine. It's also possible to calculate values in an analog way. Digital uh, calculation machine. And here we have <coughs> Uh, the calculation machine from Blaise Pascal. Pascal, very uh, important uh, uh, French scientist who made a mechanical uh, calculating machine. And many other people have made, made these types of calculating machines. But I think Pascal was the first or he was very important. Calculating programs here in the book. Uh, how uh, a computer works with a um, memory uh, calculating uh, machine in the middle, uh, storing, storage, etc. etc. And these were the uh, classical uh, old school cards that were used in the parts in the past, sorry, to feed to get to give the input to the computer. We call it in the Netherlands a pons card, pons card, literal translation. And here we have a kind of tape, like a Morse tape in which holes are punched and every hole man means a zero or a one. Uh, uh, now, as far as I know, these cards are no longer used. They are completely obsolete. Also here, this kind of tape is completely obsolete. The storage from um, uh, information on computers goes in a completely different way now in 2015. Uh, decimal and binary uh, getallen numbers, flip-flop, and here we go again in the book uh, An old school calculating machine with tubes. I hope it's visible. My book moves a little bit. Tubes were used in the first computers, for instance the ENIAC. You can find much information on the internet about the ENIAC, etc. etc. In modern times, uh, transistors were used here and uh, after that we have, of course, our chips and large-scale integrated circuits where millions, millions of transistors are integrated on a surface from approximately one at one centimeter. So this is completely obsolete, but interesting. Here we see how uh, a magnetic memory worked, stored by sending a current uh, to the magnetic rings, you can see that better, a current was sent uh, through the ring in a certain way, uh, perhaps this way and also that way, but the ring got magnetized 
and when it was magnetized it was for instance a 1, or not magnetized it was a 0, and also the magne magnetism from the ring could be erased so that it got back to a zero again. So here we have a magnetic ring memory again. My camera tells me that I have to stop. This is a kind of hard disk from the past. So, hard disks also existed in 1955, 1956, the first hard disks. And this is a, also a very old school hard disk. Interesting to see how magnetic uh, information was stored on a kind of cylinder with a magnetic layer on, on its outside. Here we have again how the rings, the magnetic rings, were uh, put into a certain magnetic position, one or zero and how they were erased again. Completely obsolete, but interesting. So, I only have three minutes left on my camera, so I can only show a few pages. Here we have the yeah. old school diode uh, logic, making an off or an AND port, OFF or AND circuit, by the means of uh, diodes. That was the way uh, uh, logical circuits were made in 1960, 1965. But uh, when the uh, electronic chips got more sophisticated, this old school way of uh, making logic circuits with what diode did not uh, work any longer. They used more sophisticated circuits with transistors. And here, beautiful photo from a computer center in, say, 1962 or 1964. I don't know that exactly, of course. I don't know when this uh, magazine was published, but it gives a very good picture about uh, the way these computer centers were made in the 60s and in the early 70s.